More than five months and 4,600 kilometers of cycling, battered by the elements and exhausted from the relentless pedaling, at last, we've made it to Shetland. And now we were just a day of cycling and one ferry ride from our final goal, a movie date at the most remote cinema in the UK, the Schoolhouse Cinema on Outscaries. But so close to our final destination, there was a problem. Storm Arwen is hitting the UK on Friday night and it's prompted a rare Met Office red warning. Every method of transport to and between the islands was cancelled in the 130 kilometer an hour gusts. During a lull in the ferocious wind, without knowing whether the ferry would even be running, we could only cross our fingers as we set off for the ferry terminal in Vidlin, 40 kilometers away. Very, very, very cold today. There, because of the timing of our ferry home, we'd have one last chance to make it to Skerries. If the ferry was canceled again, we'd have to turn back. just over there has offered us a spare room and some soup. For our last night on the Shetland mainland, Caroline, Victor and John Arthur invited us into the warmth and offered us a place to stay in their camper van. And we spent the evening playing board games and praying that the sea would be calm enough for us to make it to Skerries in the morning. There we go. Everyone! <laughs> You can borrow them for the yeah, few days in yeah, case. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Oh, oh, so away then, the old dog now. watch. Yeah. Okay. Look at those. Thank, <laughs> <you're welcome. laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank Thank you. You're welcome. And see you in a few days' time when we drop off the cards and everything. <laughs> By the morning, though, things were still up in the air. This is Gary Sherry here for the American Life on Sunday the 28th, down the Florida the 9 in the morning. The summer will be down north for the local. We have the Vidlin now at, uh, leaving at 10 o'clock for Vidlin and we'll be going north Gary's for the local. So we'll be leaving Vidlin at 10 o'clock and if it's okay we'll be doing the normal boat in Sunday morning. Okay, so we'll be going to Vidlin and 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 we'll be going to Vidl
if we're going to be able to get to Scaries yet. We won't know until we're a few meters from the shore, just outside the harbor. because it's so wavy today but they managed to get the boat in so we're here for the next five days and you can see why it's hard to get in because the mouth of the harbour is so small and it gets so wavy out there that you have to be really careful when you're sailing the boat in. Welcome to Out Scary Still! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, okay, thank so you really you feel better now that you're on land. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't believe people live out here. Less than a mile from the schoolhouse cinema. And this is out scaries. So straight, it's just in the middle of the house. Look how amazing it is. That's Look at these so seats. Cool. They've even got numbers on them. Uh, uh, it's a proper one. After everything we'd been through to get here, this was the moment we'd been waiting for. And with a cinema as our goal for this entire trip, what better movie to watch than one of my all time favourites? Cinema Paradiso. An Italian movie that follows the friendship between a young boy and a film projectionist, before the boy leaves his hometown in pursuit of opportunity. A reality we'd learn that Out Scaries knows only too well. But as we were getting the cinema ready, another problem. The storm, it seemed, wasn't over yet, and water had seeped its way through the roof, blowing a fuse in the schoolhouse. All right, let's try that now. The fuse box still isn't working, uh, which means that the cinema isn't working. But I'm gonna go and look for some extension cables to try and rewire the house, basically, so that we can get the cinema working from a different, because at the moment it's just one section of the house that isn't working. We can't have come all this way. to fall down at the last turn and have the cinema not work while we're staying here. So we have 
a huge array of extension cables <laughs> trying to get this cinema to work. Okay. Oh my god. To all the people we met who helped us get here, whether that was with a place to stay, a hot meal, or just a few words of encouragement. To those who are willing to sit down and share their stories, and to all of you who are willing to listen and follow this adventure along. You taught us more about our home country and its neighbors than we could ever express. So thank you. This wouldn't have been possible without you. Here we were, on Shetland's tiny easternmost islands, and our movie date was over. But that meant we finally had a chance to properly explore these islands, and find out just how this cinema actually got here. The name Outskerries comes from two Old Norse words. Auster meaning east, and sker for an isolated rock in the sea. And with such a small community so far from anywhere, it almost felt like the residents here had their own tiny kingdom to rule themselves. From up here you can see every corner of Outskerries. So if I go around, you'll just see that the sea keeps going in every direction. It's really cool. It, it feels very isolating to be out here. Things are going around there. There's a peninsula down there. And we are 
but right now we're here but we're staying up here at the schoolhouse so we can probably walk around the whole thing in a day or two There's an otter right there. Hello. The pristine nature here is hard to find anywhere else in the UK. The archipelago is full of natural base. Even when storms whip up the surrounding ocean, the waters inside these sheltered areas remain relatively calm. So there was a stillness here. As we were getting our bearings, we started to see how life actually worked all the way out here. The power, well, that comes from an undersea cable. There's the power cable disappearing into the sea and off towards the Shetland mainland. The water, there's a small reservoir to supply the residents. Everyone has huge freezers to store food because supplies only come in once a week. If you have a medical problem, there's a nurse that comes twice a month. So those are the times when the nurse visits. I guess if you've got non-urgent medical issues which is a huge improvement on the old system before telephones and telegrams when, if someone needed a doctor, they raised a flag over the islands. Someone on the Shetland mainland would be keeping watch and send a doctor if they saw the flag. And there are two, yes, two, tiny shops for just 20 people. That's because the two inhabited islands in the archipelago weren't always connected by this bridge. So there's one shop on each island. How many customers do you see on a daily basis? I might see nobody at all, or I might see two, maybe three people in a day. Does that make it difficult to run a shop, or is it...? Yes, it's impossible to keep to try and keep it going. Mm -hmm. Well, I keep telling myself I'm going to retire, but I've not done it yet. I'd like to see more people coming into the place, but at the moment it's... Well, it's looking kind of doubtful but I'd like to see that. But if Janice does retire and her shop closes, it'll be part of a worrying trend here. Because among the breathtaking nature, wherever you look on Outscaries, there are signs of the community's decline. I wonder how much this, all this stuff cost once. Yeah. It's all just rusting away. Over 150 people once lived here, but that's fallen to just 23 today. And during the week, sometimes there are less than 20 people on Outscaries. The tiny airstrip with the world's shortest commercial runway at just 375 meters used to be a lifeline to the outside world. But it was shut down in 2015 over safety concerns. And overnight, these islands became even more isolated. Now, the ferry, which runs several times a week if the weather allows it, is the only way on and off these islands, unless you have your own boat. There was a school here too, but that closed down after its last remaining pupil left Skerries in 2016. So this is the school that has been just left empty for a little while now. The building is still here though, and if enough new families move to the islands, it'll be reopened again. But that is Outscary's major problem. Attracting new, especially young, working people and their families to the archipelago. The fish farm and fish factory which provided jobs both shut down as well making that even harder. Well, we keep trying to get people to come with kids to try and get the council to reopen the school, but as yet 
um, they haven't. We just lost a woman that would have been a nurse here and she had to give up her job because she had a little girl and she learned that the school was closed. If the school had been open, she would have came and took the job. It's not looking very good because it's mostly older people that live here. It's all a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Businesses shut down and jobs disappear, so people head for the mainland. Then, because people have left, more businesses shut down and the council closes the school. That forces more people to leave and makes it harder to attract new arrivals to replace them. So more businesses go under and the cycle continues. It's not all gone yet, though. Just follow me, you way. When said my grandparents on that white house? My other grandparents on that white house. Uh, <laughs> and my parents built that house. Oh, wow. <laughs> I grew up next to school. You couldn't sky if though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah. used to being late. <laughs> yeah. You fish for scallops, right? You fish for scallops. And yeah. do you eat scallops? No. Why not? Because I'm allergic. <laughs> Scallop fisherman is allergic to, to yeah. scallops. When I started, there were three full time boats here, and uh, no one only went best here. How many in your crew? Three. Just me and me, and me two nephews. So is this one of the only things on Scaries that kind of employs young people? Yeah. Do you think there'll be a new industry that comes to Scaries? Well, they could be, but it requires it requires a workforce. And it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing. Do you set up a business hop and you can get somebody to come here to work out with? Or do you get somebody here and hop at the okay to do the work? Theory. What do you think? characterizes people here. What is the Scaries culture like? I would say growing up it was determination and hard work and the, the pendability to everybody. If you needed something you can't everybody would help if you possibly could. You can't everybody. Everybody can't you. And that was a really good thing growing up. Could you ever see yourself living anywhere else? I hope not, no. No. Don't think so. Even though the community has fallen on hard times, the people who remain here continue to look out for one another. And we'd soon experience that firsthand. When my drone, far out over the water, started losing a battle against the wind. Really sorry to bother you again. Okay. I was just flying my drone around a factory just across the bay. It's like a few hundred meters away on the other side of that. Oh, I see, okay. I, this, I've never done this before. <laughs> just caught short. First time for everything. Ex exactly. <laughs> no. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> Just on a quest to save the drone on the other side of the bay here. There. I should walk through the chuck. Oh my god. Where? 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 Right, go. Cool. <laughs> All right. I'm going to push off and I'll come back and fuck you up. All right. <laughs> don't, don't leave me here. <laughs> Cheers. <I'm not> <laughs> okay. Where are you? Drone. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> Got it. Okay, go! Have you always lived 
done out scary. Yeah, yeah, I'm born here. <laughs> Thank you for the help. You're a lifesaver. As well as Willy saving my drone, we'd also been taken in by some neighbours. Lovely to meet you both. And thank you thank for you. the tea and chocolates and cakes and everything <laughs> since we've been here. Anna has seen everything on these islands. What's that going to be when it's finished? A blanket like the one behind you on the sofa. She's lived on Skerries for over 80 years and grew up here before there was a single telephone on the archipelago. <laughs> so you've lived here since you were 10 days old? Well, yes, except for holidays of been very contented and quite at home. I could never ever live in a city where they're running, catching buses and things and no, that's not my, no, this is home and this is how oh, I like it. And even on a very wild day when the waves and the sea is crashing on the rocks and that, it's fascinating to go and sit and watch that. She told us how she passed the time as a child here, listening to the fishermen singing hymns to one another across the radio. They would speak to each other on the VHF radio and say, do you know such and such a hymn? Oh yeah, he knew that one and he would start singing it. Yeah, you could spend those last night I bought. How, despite being so isolated, she remembers that World War II found out Scaries. We knew the different songs uh, when the German planes were coming overhead because they had a different song from the British plane. And then the lighthouse buildings where all the families left, there were four families. That got bombed, so that was scary. And I can mind too, Coming home from school when the fishing boats were so they were not big boats then of this. Then we would get sent up to the top of the hills to see if we could see them come. And in the latter years of war, there were mines floating in the sea and you just didn't know what you were going to find. As she grew up, Anna had seen industry come and go on Outscaries. We had the fish factory and that was good. And I enjoyed working there. I was 35 years filleting fish. I was in it the day it had opened and I was in it the day it had closed. And with all the changes she'd witnessed in her lifetime, I asked her what she thought the future of Outscaries might be. What do they do for jobs? I mean, that's the problem. I hop it won't go any further down. As long as what we have now can keep going, there's a faint hope. <laughs>Crazy Chris is Chris's stage name. He's an entertainer through and through, a magician, fire breather, dancer, and a man full of ideas. Well, I've got the house blind. So I put a bid in for it, raised my bid last minute, and, and won. On the internet, there was no interior pictures, just the outside. Wow. I had no idea what I was buying. 
when I arrived, I realised there wasn't a great deal to do on the island. It's a lovely place. Uh, you know, a lot of bird watchers come, uh, and a lot of people come to experience our scary for all its beauty, peace, and tranquility. But when the evening comes, there's not a great deal there. I mean, you can go to people's homes, and, and that's all very nice. But as I say, I, I, I'm an entertainer. I need to do something different. So I had a few ideas. And then through time, actually through three years, I, I implemented them all. <laughs> Before long, Scaries would have a casino, a spa, and of course, the cinema. Well, it took me 12 months to restore the entire house. And some of the floors were so bad, I had to take all the floors and all the joists up. So it, it was a complete renovation project. Were there any bit moments in making it where you were like, what am I doing? <laughs> when I drove down to pick up the cinema seats, I had to hire a seven and a half ton truck. You do have to question, why am I doing this? Remind me. <laughs> Sometimes you have to remind yourself, actually, yes, it will work out. I was pop committed. I bought my cinema seats, I bought my projector, I bought my amp. I'm all in. I, I, I did a lot of research on what I can, what I cannot do. So I decided, let's go for it. Let's turn that room into cinema. Uh, some of the hardest part was to work out how to get everything in inside. Uh, to have the right projector because of course it was a short distance but i wanted the best quality yeah and and then the cinema was born i had the cinema tickets two pictures so when people came to school house cinema it wasn't just a you know i'm going to watch a movie it was the entire experience what is it about cinema in particular and film that made you want to set that up rather than you know focusing on something else I've got so much from movies over the years, and I, I, I think movies can change people's lives. Um, you know, it's an incredible feeling, isn't it? When you go to see a movie and it touches you deep, and to actually watch a good movie from start to finish and be immersed, forget about the world, forget about your troubles, as you go into a different world. And this is why I, I, I'm trying to bring that to other people. And some people just need to escape. They've got so many troubles going on in their lives. And just have a two-hour break from the kids, for example, and come just themselves, their partner. Just them, totally peace, have a glass of wine, have some popcorn. I didn't charge. I didn't charge for anything. I used to pay for it myself. Uh, popcorn, sweets, candy. And so many people have gone away knowing that they felt almost loved. If you're coming all this way to ask Gary's, then it is nice to be feel appreciated. Since opening the cinema in 2017, Chris has left the schoolhouse behind, and the building is now on sale. And hopefully the cinema will live on, but its continued existence depends on who buys it. As for Crazy Chris, he's now converting a fire engine into a mobile cinema to drive around Shetland, again free of charge. And he did have a bit of exciting news to share. We have been very blessed with some new people arriving. They got really great ideas, and they're, even tonight I'm going up to play snooker. And they do bowling on the Monday. There is a new fishing boat coming back as well, so fishing is going to start and back up. And we've got an agriculture company who's coming in in a couple of weeks and hoping to, uh, to bring work to the island for that as well. It's very, very encouraging. I feel very uh, energised now here. Five countries, one crown dependency, 4,700 kilometers, and all that peddling behind us. At long last, it was time to head home. Goodbye, Schoolhouse Cinema, and goodbye, Schoolhouse. I can't believe we're actually going. Going back south. Bye bye. See you guys. <laughs> There's out scaries behind me disappearing into the distance. Those islands have been a milestone in our heads for so long and to be Waving goodbye to them now is pretty weird. It's exciting to be going home and stuff, but there's definitely a twinge of sadness that the trip's over. Here we 
are back in Midland. Cheers. Hello. Hello. Lovely to see you again, Caroline. <laughs> yeah, in your Christmas apron. Thanks for the thanks for the games to keep us up. Bye. Back in Lowick! <laughs> My bed. <laughs> We've just made it back to Aberdeen after a 14 hour ferry from Shetland. But we're gonna be here for about seven hours before we catch a train down to London. What hour are we on? 36. Hour 36 of our travel. Goodbye, Miss J. Thank you for a crazy five and a half months. Feels very weird to be going our separate ways yeah. now. After almost half a year on the road together, Jill and I parted ways near London and I continued back to Stenning alone. So, here I am, cycling exactly the same way but in the other direction that Jill and I cycled on our first day of this cycle tour almost six months ago when we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into and back when we thought we'd only be gone for three to four months. This is a crazy feeling. The fact that tomorrow I'm just gonna be in my house doing like normal day-to-day -day things is probably gonna come as a bit of a shock when I get there. I was back in reality again and the feeling was a little jarring after so long on the road. Getting off my bike and unpacking for the last time, for a while at least, was bittersweet. The adventure was well and truly done. Hi! Hello! Hello. <laughs> How are you? Oh, that's fantastic! Hello! Hello. <laughs> Hello. So what now? Well, one update is that Jill and I aren't together anymore. So she's not associated with this channel. But while this crazy adventure together might have been over, I'd had another idea. One that would take me much, much further from home. <laughs> 